Hello friends, today I'm back again um, to actually complete the second part of the lips buffer or low exploit that we had talked about in the first part. Um, at this point of time, if you have looked um, at my first exploit, um, that was basically sort of a static disassembly of function um, that was susceptible to a buffer overflow. In this part, I'm actually going to show you how to exploit that using um, IWO. And then obviously, we, in this case, we're going to jump to a function um, that wasn't supposed to be called in any way from the actual um, program. So in this case, there is a function called never called. And let's analyze never called very quickly. So all this function is doing is basically, if you look at it, is um, obviously this will be the prologue for MIPS function. The first two lines are basically the prologue of it. Um, the, the line that is much more important is, is basically the line that does the puts. So if you look at um, the T9 variable, which is usually the variable that is always um, loaded up with sort of the system functions or any functions that are being called. So it's being loaded up with a function called puts, which is similar to printf. Um, I think the compiler usually replaces that um, when, when the program is getting compiled. And if you look at the A0 variable, as we had talked about last time, the A0 variable technically has um, the first value um, that needs to go into this function. So that has the value congratulations, and basically it's calling JL outputs. And it seems like if you call this function, this will end up you know, recursively calling again and again congratulations and displaying that on, on your page. Um, so <clears throat> considering that aspect, Let's see how that actually happens. So what we want to do is figure out how many uh, uh, values before we actually control um, the, the RA, which is the return address in this case. So if you look at it, we can see that the destination um, takes about 24 characters. So overall, um, there are 288 characters. The RA is stored at 284. Um, and the destination, which was the buffer that we had used for storing this value, which was 24 characters. So if we subtract 284 minus 24, we get 260. And that's what um, would be the amount of values that we would need to have before we can actually control the return address at this point of time. So let's take an example of this one. What I'm going to do is basically do use my... Um, my VM that has this specific um, program loaded up. Now, in this case, since this is in MIPS, I have to use um, chemo MIPSL to actually load that specific function and that specific program. What I want to do is also use um, specifically um, the, the GDB debugging option so that I can basically debug it from my windows in my VM. And then what I'm going to do is basically call overflow me and just give it a name. So let's try hello. And in this case, we're not trying to overflow. We're just basically looking at how the function responds. And so let it go. And now there's a break point over here. So it's trying to JRRA. And if we look at it right now, it's just going to be the normal value, which is this value. And so we can let it go. And the program exits. And we can see it say hello, hello. Now, what we're going to do is, so I already have 260As sort of con concatenated with some Bs. And then I have sort of the return value um, being you know, already concatenated. But just to give you a taste of this, what I want to do is remove this for the time being. and replace it with uh, four X's so that we can see whether we control the RA or not. And that will be a lot more easier for us to observe. So right now, because of the GDB debugging, it's again, um, it pauses the specific program. Um, once that is done, what you want to do is attach using your IDA pro and control it. And now again, if we look, the program count is pointing to the specific function JRRA. And if you look at the RA variable, right now uh, we have basically the control over it. Um, there's one um, X less, which means that it wasn't exactly 
259th and then uh, the rest of the excess and that's the reason you can see that over here so if you want to actually go into the array we can see on the stack um, are all A's being put down together and if we scroll down we should be able to see uh, basically this is the uh, the R, this is where basically the original RA value was stored and we have overwritten that value with our excess in a way and so if we let this go this should cause a segmentation fault and say that this specific address is not readable or writable and that's perfectly fine and so what I'm going to do is replace this with what we had earlier and let's see if we control the value at this point of time so what I'm doing is um, if you look at the address the, since this is a program address this would not change um, yeah, usually, usually ASLR or something like that so if you look at the never called uh, specific address it's basically this which is 0040070 and so um, since this is little Indian you'd have to place that in the reverse order I'm basically using Perl to concatenate that with, uh, with that uh, of our string. So let's try that now. Let's see if we control the program and actually make it point to this never called function and then let it execute after that. And so let's attach it to process. And so again, the program counter has halted at JRRA, which is the jump, uh, and return to the return address. And so if you look at it, the, the, that's where the address is. So if you look at the RA variable, we have been able to control it. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we should also see that on the stack as well as we had seen the earlier address. And so there is our address that we have been able to control. And so if we step singly, there you are. You're already in that function, which we had seen that it calls congratulations. If we let it go, you can see the congratulations is being printed again and again and again. And so this helps us to sort of understand that you know using Stack Overflow in in the MIPS program, how to control the specific buffer, and in that way basically figure out how to exploit the buffer overflow and take control of the return address. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, in the coming sections, my intention is also to show you how to exploit a little bit of more buffer overflow in a, in a real situation, such as um, in a firmware of a router or possibly other programs that exist uh, in the operating system. So stay tuned. Thanks again.